Hey, what's up everyone? This is Sam with Vercoco and today I am super excited to walk you guys through our workflow for converting Daz 3D characters for use with Vercoco's face and motion capture tools. Now, this workflow is by no means a finished product, but hopefully this video will give you a little bit of an idea of what's possible when you unlock the limitless models that you can find on Daz Marketplace and convert them for use with facial motion capture. Okay, let's jump into it. Yeah! First things first, let's go over how face capture works in broad terms. You need two things for face capture to work, a face capture recording or FBX and a rigged model that you can retarget that recording onto. Ever since the Apple AR kit was released, the first part of that equation has been pretty well solved. Our face capture system using an iPhone X or higher uses the same technology behind the Apple AR kit. And using it, you can generate a model or FBX with the standard 52 blend shapes baked in. That's the first part of the equation done. However, as we've played with our face capture tools in Rococo Studio, we've realized the real bottleneck with facial capture was the second part of the equation, the ability to find models that are rigged with the correct 52 blend shapes. There is no online marketplace or library of models with these blend shapes that is easily accessible. There are great services like Polywink, where you can send in a mesh and they will rig it with the appropriate blend shapes and send it back to you. But this process can cost hundreds of dollars per model and it takes the control away from you a little bit because you have to send that model to someone else. However, there is a workflow that allows you to convert or add the correct blend shapes onto Daz 3D models. This is amazing because the Daz Marketplace has tons of models in all shapes and sizes. In addition to that, you can use Daz 3D Studio to customize those models, giving you an essentially unlimited pool of models that can be rigged correctly to accept facial capture animation. While Daz models already come with facial blend shapes, they're not the standard 52 blend shapes that our system requires. So this workflow uses a third-party plugin from Maya to generate those correct facial blend shapes. After you've added the right blend shapes, you can take that model and drive it using our facial mocap in any 3D program. In this specific video, I'm going to show you how to get that rigged model into Cinema 4D, but you can also use that model in Unreal, Blender, Unity, or just stay in Maya itself. The important thing is adding the correct blend shapes to the Daz 3D models. The first thing we'll look at is the Daz Marketplace. If we go to daz3d.com and click on shop and then on people and wearables, we can see the types of models that are available. This workflow only works for Genesis 3 and Genesis 8 models. So if we want to see what is available with those models, we can just click on this drop down menu and then select those two models. Now, all of these models that you can see here will work with this workflow. But the thing I really like about Daz are all the non-human models that you can find. I've put a bunch of my favorites in the wish list up here. This behemoth model, for example, is awesome. It's so unique and detailed, and because it's so alien looking, you don't have an uncanny valley problem. And there are tons of different models like this. You can definitely find awesome human models too, but I think these types of creatures are really fun and unique. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using this dark elf model. To get it downloaded and into Daz Studio, I would purchase the model and then hit download and install. This would open up Daz Download Manager, which would download the model and import it into Daz Studio. I'm not going to do this because I already have, and there are lots of tutorials on YouTube that you can check out that cover this process if you have questions about getting your Daz Marketplace models into Daz Studio. Okay, now let's actually open up Daz Studio. If we click on figures over here on the left, we can see all the models that we've purchased. Let's go ahead and click on our dark elf 
to add him to the scene. Just double click. Now, at this point, we're ready to export this guy. But before we do, we can look at some of the customization options that are available. Daz uses a morph shape type system, which means that you can change the shapes of your models. I bought this ultimate shapes bundle from Daz, which has all of these different interesting morphs that you can use to customize the model. If we jump back into Daz and click on shaping, we can add some of these morphs. This system is kind of like a video game character customization screen. So you can mix and match the different morphs to create something completely unique. This is the real power of this workflow. All of these characters would work with our facial mocap once we add the blend shapes in Maya. And that makes the possibilities endless for creating new models that you can use with facial mocap. Going through here, let's maybe add some snake and maybe some cat to our dark elf to give him a unique look. Looking nice and weird. And again, I, I'll keep saying this, but this tutorial isn't meant to cover every aspect of this process. There are many tutorials on Daz itself and this kind of work. But if you have a question, again, put them in the comments and we'll try to answer them as best we can or point you in the right direction. Okay, now that we're done, we just export the model. Select it, then go to File Export. I usually try to name each FBX by where it came from to keep everything organized. There'll be a lot of them as we go through this process. Now let's open up Maya. We'll import our snake cat elf guy. At this point, we'll use Lalo 3D's plugin FaceCap X. You can find these plugins at Lalo3D.com. I purchased the Ultimate Package, which will convert Genesis 3 and Genesis 8 models, both male and female, to the correct 52 blend shapes. Again, I'm not going to dive deep into this plugin, but Lalo has a bunch of different tutorials and is also very responsive to emails if you run into trouble. So like all Maya plugins, you can enable the Lalo 3D Face Cap X in the plugin manager. To add the correct blend shapes to our DAS model, we will select both the eyelashes of the model and the main geometry of the model. Then we'll go up to Lalo 3D Tools and select Set Up GUI in the Face Cap X section. Boom. And just like that, we now have converted this DAS model to the correct 52 blend shapes for use with facial mocap. Again, DAS comes with blend shapes already included in many of the models, but they aren't the right blend shapes to use with a facial mocap system that runs off the standard 52 blend shapes. At this point, we can now export this model to another 3D program. For example, here is another DAS 3D model that's working within Blender, being driven by Rococo body and face mocap. This was actually a live stream uh, out of Rococo Studio directly into Blender. For this tutorial, however, I'm going to set up this model for Cinema 4D. To do that, we'll select File, Export All, 
and then we'll export our newly converted model for use in Cinema 4D. Okay, let's open up Cinema and import our model. Here we go. So first things first, we can delete this GUI. We don't need it. If we open up this tree hierarchy right here, we can see that the FBX consists of a skeleton as well as our eyelashes and primary model geometry. For simplicity's sake, we're going to delete the eyelashes and its skeleton. We don't need them for this model. And again, check out tutorials if you wanna know how to keep those eyelashes included. Now, because this is Cinema 4D, and Cinema 4D is terrible at retargeting, we can't use our normal constraint tag workflow on this skeleton. This skeleton features both bend and twist bones, and Cinema 4D simply doesn't know how to handle them. If you have a model that you need to use bend and twist bones, I would recommend doing the body mocap retargeting in a program like Maya. But because we're in Cinema 4D, I'm actually going to re-rig this model using Mixamo. Because the model mesh won't change throughout this process, we'll just be able to transfer the blend shapes onto the new model from Mixamo. I'm going to remove the blend shapes tag as well as the null containing the actual blend shapes and save them for later. And then copy this mesh to a new project. Then I'll export an FBX for Mixamo. I will then go through the normal rigging process for Mixamo, which I can speed through. Once the model is uploaded and rigged, I'll select a T-Pose and then download the new character. Then we will bring that T-Pose back into our project and replace the blend shapes tag and the null. As you can see, if we move these sliders, the blend shapes are still affecting the mesh, even though this mesh just came from Mixamo and is not our original mesh. Okay, now for the final part of the process, alphabetizing the blend shapes. Unfortunately, Lalo 3D gives us blend shapes that are unorganized. And for us to easily copy over the face mocap data that we'll record in Rococo Studio, they will need to be in alphabetical order. This is a pain, but necessary. First, we'll open up our timeline dope sheet. There is currently no animation on our blend shapes for our character. So to get them to show up in our dope sheet, we will record a single keyframe at frame zero. Now you can see that the pose morph tag has appeared in the dope sheet. I'll expand the tab and then expand the window so I can see all the blend shapes. Then I'll go through and alphabetize them. I'll speed through this. Woo, not fun. But the good news is we only have to do this one time. We are now finally ready to record our actual mocap. I'm going to save this file as a master and then I'm never going to touch it again. Anytime I use this file, I'm going to make a copy or save a new version of it so that my master is always safe. You don't want to have to redo all of that alphabetizing work that you just did. Now let's jump into Rococo Studio and actually record some mocap.
We have many tutorials on how to set up your SmartSuit Pro and iPhone to record body and face mocap together, so you can check out our YouTube channel for more in-depth tutorials on that process. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and record something. So, I'm a snake, I'm a cat, I'm a dark elf, what am I? I don't know. Wink. So, I'm a snake, I'm a cat, I'm a dark elf. What am I? I don't know. Wink. Okay, we're done recording and now we're going to export our animation. Even though we're going to use a model from Mixamo, I always try to use the standard Newton skeleton. I find it to be easier. If we jump back into Cinema, let's import our Rococo animation. When we import it, you can see that we get both the skeleton and the face mesh with our blend shapes that we just recorded. Transferring the blend shapes is easy at this point. Simply open up the Timeline Editor again, select our Rococo animation pose morph, and hit Command C to copy. Then select the Daz Models pose morph, and hit Command V to paste. Voila, it is that easy. If we hit play, you can see that we now have facial mocap. You can adjust the strength of the mocap using this slider. You can make it either more powerful or less powerful. Sometimes depending on the mesh, you might want to have it be less powerful if your mesh is overlapping itself. In order to copy over the movement of the skeleton, we'll use the same constraint tag workflow that we normally use in Cinema 4D. I'll speed through that process, but we again have lots of tutorials covering this as well on our YouTube. Okay, and we're done. I'll go through and add some lights and a camera and export out a little sample for us to see. So I'm a snake, I'm a cat, I'm a dark elf. What am I? I don't know. Wink. Finally, we have a rigged model from Daz that is ready to use with Rococo face and body mocap. If we want to use another recording from Rococo Studio, I would simply go into the master file and redo this process again. But because it's already alphabetized, we just have to copy our recorded data and paste it onto our model's blend shapes. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars to rig a single model with the correct blend shapes, if you learn this process, you can have access to limitless models. You can customize them in Daz Studio, and Daz Studio has clothing and props and lots of other stuff that can make your mocap really sing. We hope that this was useful, and again, if you have questions, please put them in the comments below. We know that this does not cover every single use case with Daz models, and the workflow changes depending on the program. We'll be putting out a lot more content featuring this type of workflow and showing how to use these DAS models because again, it's just so exciting to be able to have access to models that we can retarget our face mocap onto. We hope you guys liked this tutorial. Tune in for more tutorials soon, more live streams where we're going to play around with this system and get out there and keep making awesome mocap. Thanks so much, guys. See you on the next one.